So, guten Morgen an alle Zuhörer eines weiteren Webinars unserer Webinarreihe Exploring. Ähm, ja, wir freuen uns, dass äh, wir heute zum Thema Iran ähm, euch einmal in die Thematik eintauchen lassen und mitnehmen. Ähm, ich äh, ich freue mich, dass äh, unsere Agentur Rad Travel heute da ist. Und ähm, als erstes möchte ich äh, mich kurz vorstellen. Mein Name ist Achlam Simmer und ähm, ich arbeite bei STR seit äh, mehr als zwei Jahren. Und ich freue mich sehr besonders, dass sich Rad Travel ähm, ja, bei uns in der, in der Führung, also in der ähm, bei SCR repräsentieren darf. Ähm, ich selbst ähm, kenne den Iran sehr gut, spreche Farsi und äh, bin mit dem Land sehr, sehr verbunden. Daher freue ich mich besonders, ähm, äh, dass, äh, dass Iran auch bei uns im Portfolio ist. Und ich hoffe, dass ähm, Rad Travel Ihnen heute ja viele Gründe nennen kann, warum man unbedingt in den Iran reisen muss. Ähm, genau, heute haben wir Sajad Shalika da. Geschäftsführer von Rad Travel und Masa Degani. Ähm, sie ist Incoming Tour Manager und hat sehr viel Kundenkontakt und ähm, erstellt die Angebote. Und ähm, ja, beide Kollegen werden heute auf Englisch vortragen. Ich hoffe, das ist für Sie in Ordnung. Und äh, bitte lassen Sie Ton und Video einmal ausgeschaltet. Sollten Sie Fragen haben, können Sie gerne die Chat-Funktion nutzen. Und wir gehen auf die Fragen dann auch gerne am Ende ein. Genau, dann ähm, gebe ich jetzt einmal weiter an ähm, ja, den Herr und die Dame, die schon bereit sind und hoffe, sie einmal sehr ähm, inspirieren zu können für das Land Iran. So, Sajad and Mahza, it's now your turn and you can start. Okay, thank you. Good morning, everyone. I hope all of you are doing fine and back to the normal life and normal business as well. Thanks to our colleagues in SDR for providing this opportunity to share our knowledge and information about uh, the country together with you, why all of us are suffering from the strain virus. So let's start uh, talking about Iran and, you know, um, in this presentation, my colleagues Mansa also will accompany me. Uh, we will go so quickly and generally uh about iran and if you need any further information or, or if you have any uh questions about details you can ask today or you can contact us anytime later so as you all may know iran is located in the asia and middle east and uh, our population is between eight uh, 80 million to 85 million, it's not exact now. And uh, the uh, Iran land, 90% is land and uh, almost 1% is water. So the government is Islamic Republic. Our currency is real. Our capital is Tehran. And our religion is Islam. And we have also Zoroastrian. Jewish and Christian in the country. We have different languages in the country, which is the most uh, uh, speaking language is Persian, our official language. We also have uh, Azeri language and mixed with Turkish, Kurdish language, we have Gilak, uh, we have Arabic language in the country, we have Baluch, and we have uh, other uh, slangs in the country, which in each state we have different slangs, and uh, uh, you may have, I mean, the propaganda of Iran in the uh, media for last 40 years uh, is caused to the country be uh, so uh, undiscovered, and most of the people in the world. They think Iran is not safe, Iran is something, you know, strange, but the uh, reality is different. And all of our tourists, when coming to the country, or if you visited our country, you can confirm me that it's 
uh, something else, and for all of the passengers will be more than satisfied when they want to go back to their country and uh, they want to come back again to Iran. So let's talk some uh, about culture in Iran and Mahsa will continue. Uh, let me just say good morning to everybody and here we are to give you a brief description about our vast country and uh, the further information will be handed later on. Um, Iran is uh, rich also in the culture. We have divided the culture into some different parts and the culture of Iran is one of the oldest in the Middle East and the Iranian identity is a collective feeling by Iranian people of belonging to the historical land of Iran. The language, the major language in Iran uh, is Farsi in the sign uh, from Farsi. Farsi also is also sp uh, spoken in Afghanistan, Tajikistan, and uh, the Pami Mountains. Uh, Persian language became the major literary instrument for many poems and also the religious work. Um, the poetry in the Persian poetry is some of the most beautiful poetry in the world, and the Persian cultivated four unique types of poetry, the epic, um, then we have Qasida, which is a narrative uh, poems, Masnavi, uh, which is, uh, the Qasida is the purpose one, and Masnavi is the narrative one, and the Qazal, which is a lyric poem. Ferdowsi, our great author of Shahnameh, it took something like 35 years to write its um, epic poem about the heroes of the ancient Persia. Uh, the Iranian manners, uh, Iranians are famous for their hospitality uh, in the world and together with the people of India and China, Iranian people uh, boost the most ancient civilization in Asia, which has brought along in the course of centuries. This long history of civilization has been shaped by many historical events from the first declaration of human rights by Cyrus the Great. The behavior and the manners of the people in Iran are the result of these centuries old influences. Um, as for the souvenirs from Iran, there are many items you find in every shop. So you can be sure that you will not uh, leave the country without uh, buying something from the handicrafts of, the, of Iran. Uh, the art, Persian art or Iranian art has one of the richest heritages in the world history and has been strong in many media including uh, architecture, painting, weaving, pottery, calligraphy, metalworking and sculpture. The most notable Persian artwork is seen in the master woven carpets and the Persian weaving flourished in the second half of the 15th century. Uh, the next part I uh, would like to talk about is the climate, the climate in Iran. Uh, a review to the climate, we can say that Iran is one of the only countries in the world which has the complete four season. In summer, the weather can be cool as well as warm. And in the cold winters, it can be mild also. A large part of the country suffers great extremes of heat and cold between summer and winter. And rainfall is mainly confined to winter and spring. Summers are warm to hot with virtually continuous sunshine with high humidity on the southern coasts. Um, the temperature difference of two locations in Iran at one point in time reaches to uh, 50 degrees of Celsius. In winter, one may uh, swim in an outdoor pool uh, or in the southern zone of the Persian Gulf, while the others are skiing in Tehran or in the western mountains. In general, Iran has an arid climate in which most of the relatively scant annual Precipitation falls from October through April. And the highest temperature, we have it in August. The lowest temperature, we have it in January. And the peak of rain will be in April. And the peak of snow, we have it in December. 
So, let me introduce our uh, company first before going uh, to talk about the um, regions in the country. So, uh, the quality is very important for us in road travel. We are one of the top 10 uh, company, incoming company in the country and uh, most of our customers are from Europe. Uh, we have uh, more than 160 active partners and we will uh, go on with the exhibitions like RTB, DDT Italy and also Feature Spain. So uh, we will collaborate with the network of most experienced and professional tour guides in the country uh, in any specific language like German language and we will also use the new and modern uh, cars like the bus uh, with uh, less than five years old and the quality as I said is matter for us and let's go for the regions of Iran as you may know the country is uh, very vast and big country and we will have different parts of country as Maso said in each season uh, in the high temperature or low temperature while you are skiing in the north of the country you can go swimming in the Persian Gulf and this is very interesting and the uh, point of the country so as you can see the country from west to east and from uh, north to the uh, south, we have a lot of uh, attractive places. Some people may think Iran is only the cultural uh, destination, but it's not only the cultural destination. But our problem is that the country is not introduced to the world well. We have the chain of mountain in the north and in the west of the country. We have the desert area in central uh, part of the country. We have the biggest lake in the world in the north of the country. And we have uh, uh, Persian Gulf and the Strait of Hormuz in south of country. We have jungles, forests, many farms in the north and northwest of the country. And even we have a lot of farms in central part of the country like pistachio and saffron so let's uh, start with the central part with mass as for the central part of iran we can say that uh, the central iran consists of a southern slope of the Alborz mountain which is in the north of um, iran and, and the zopas mountain in the south this area we call uh, the central Iran. The central Iranian range and the desert of Dasht e uh, the, the, the whole central Iran encompasses the magnificent cities of Isfahan, Yaz, and Shiraz, which is considered as the cultural cities uh, of the country. Now we'll go through the activities we could do or the things we could do in the central part of Iran. Um, we have some cultural uh, UNESCO, uh, UNESCO World Heritage sites as the cultural activities. Uh, to name, we can call uh, the BAM and the Cathedral in uh, and the BAM and the cultural landscape of that in Kerman province. We have the cultural landscapes of Mayman also in Kerman. Then we have the Govistan Palace in Tehran. Historic city of Yaz has wholly been uh, registered in UNESCO World Heritage. And then we have in Isfahan, uh, we have J uh, Jami Mosque of Isfahan. We have the whole square, Nasser Jahan Square. And then uh, that's it about Iran. In the uh, Fars province, uh, very near to Shiraz, we have the Pasa God, which is the tomb of the Cyrus, and the Persepolis, we call it Taht e And then uh, again, in uh, Fars province, we have the Sassanid archaeological landscape of Fars. Uh, some of the gardens in Isfahan, or uh, yeah, in some other cities, we have Chehel Sotun Garden, 
uh, in Kashan, we have Queen Garden and these things. Uh, in in the central Iran, uh, in Yaz province, especially, we have uh, the Persian uh, Ganots, which is the um, system, water system, uh, underground water system. And the most important one is the Lut Desert that we have. These are the UNESCO site heritages that we have in central Iran. Also, we have different handicrafts, many, many different handicrafts, just to name some of them. We have Minakari, we have Khatab, and these are things. And in the next slide, you can see some of the pictures of these um, handicrafts also. Yeah, I think it is the second picture, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, the second picture is um, the Minakari, and the next to it, we, you can see the Persian carpet, so also uh, the handicraft. Uh, and now let's get to the intangible heritages and uh, to say that Iranian intangible, uh, intangible cultural heritages include performing art, traditional and handmade crafts, the skills associated with traditional and handmade crafts, social traditions and customs, festivities and rituals, and so on. To name some of them, which has been registered in the World Heritage UNESCO, uh, I will give you the list of them. Art of crafting and playing with kamanche, uh, which is a, a music instrument. Then we have togan, which is a horse riding game accompanied by music and storytelling. We have Nuru's festival, uh, which is the very beginning of the new year, the Persian new year. Then we have Nagali, which is Iranian dramatic storytelling, has been registered 2011 in UNESCO. Uh, we have also Pahlavani and Zulfana rituals, which is the, some kind of sports that, and ritual that they treat the warriors and the soldiers. Then we have ritual dramatic art of Taizie that has been registered on UNESCO in 2010, and it is uh, for the uh, special uh, time and special uh, places. We have it in Muharram and we have it in our morning um, parts. Uh, then we have traditional skills of carpet weaving in Kasha. And these are the cultural activities we could do. And then let's go to the desertic activities we have. So we have the desert. If I can have the previous slide, it would be uh, perfect to show the desert, the Lut Desert, and the vast area of central Iran, which is mostly desertic part. Uh, yeah, we have uh, we have the Lut Desert, as you can see on the map, and Kavir Desert. Uh, that's the Lut and that's the Kavir you could see. And also uh, around the Yaz province and around the Sahan province, we have the uh, uh, yeah, we have the uh, deserts there. So uh, many kind of deserts with um, their special texture. And I mean, each of them are quite different from the others. And there, there are facilities that you could do some uploading and stargazing and doing these activities. Uh, going with going to deep into the deserts with four and four cars, of course, with some uh, local guides, it will be possible stargazing i mean you can unbelievably sleep on the sky I mean, under the sky and watch the stars very near to you uh, then there are very uh, nice salt lakes in the desert in the loot desert and also we have it in um Gong province also the the, the, the the lake the salt lake uh, the accommodation would be in traditional houses or hotels. I mean, the hotels in every city we have the hotels, all category of the hotels. But uh, in some of the cities, we have the opportunity to have, I mean, provide the accommodation for the clients uh, in traditional houses, which has been converted to the hotels. And the request and the, uh, I mean, the request for them is quite high. Uh, but in the high seasons, when we have a lot of passengers, they will not be possible. I mean, and it should be. Um, it should be booked very well in advance. So this is the central Iran. Uh -huh. uh, another point is about the camping. 
Uh, in the desert, it would be completely possible to camp in the Lut desert or in the deserts around Isfahan and Yazd. And this is uh, something, uh, the normal tents, of course, the camps and the tents are the normal tents, but uh, we will try our very best as the quality is very important for us to provide you with the uh, best possible services and also the local guys who knows the area very, very well. So this is about the central area and the rest of Iran will be done by Saja. As I said before, uh, besides uh, being a destination for cultural, Iran is a well uh, known destination for ecotourists as well. So I'm going to talk about the rest of the country, which is surrounded by uh, Armenian highland in the north and the Zagros chain mountain, and uh, will end with the Khuzestan province in the south. So as I said, uh, you can have the uh, mountain hiking in the Zagros mountain, which uh, the highest point is, I think, Dena Mountain with 4,600 uh, meter, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, you can have also from Tabriz to the Khuzestan, which is Ahwaz. We have a lot of uh, UNESCO World Heritage Site. Uh, from Tabriz is the Tabriz Bazaar. And then we have Taht Suleiman. And we have also uh, Sultan Yedom in Zanjan. Uh, we have Shusha and Chogazambil in Khuzestan province and Bisotun in Kermanshah. So uh, when we are making a uh, route for you uh, to go for the round trip, so uh, we can have the western part of the country from Tabriz to uh, Khuzestan province and then go to Shiraz through this way. So we have a lot of uh, nomads in the country, which are named as Shah Savan uh, nomad, Kurt, Lor, Gashkoi, uh, Kamesh, Baluch in the uh, southeast of the country, and also Turkaman in the north of the country. So you can also enjoy the nomad life uh, in many parts of the country in uh, some season. And uh, we have a lot of natural uh, sources for enjoying the uh, ecotourists. So um, we have Sarain in north of in north uh, west of the country, which is uh, hot water spring. So you also, uh, as you can see, you can enjoy the west of the country. Uh, with the eco-tourists and also cultural tourists. And if next we go to the north of the country, you can see it's surrounded by Caspian Sea, uh, the biggest lake in the world at the north and the mountain chain of Alborz in the south and the highest uh, mountain in the Alborz is uh, 5,600 meter is a potentially active volcano and the highest volcano in Asia. A lot of tourists will come here for the uh, hiking in the Damovant uh, mountain. And you can have the jungle trekking uh, in the uh, most, uh, I mean, in the old, one of the oldest uh, jungle in the world which is Hirkanian uh, forest and newly it has been uh, registered as the uh, UNESCO World Heritage uh, site again and it's between 25 to 15 million uh, years old and the unique point of this uh, trekking in the jungle is that in some point in some area the jungle, mountain, and the sea are connected together, and you can see uh, all together in the uh, same time. And you can enjoy trekking uh, in this old mountain. Uh, you can have biking tours. You can have, again, mountain uh, hiking, 
We have ski resorts near Tehran, which is one is Shemshak, one is Bizin, and one is uh, Obali. So a lot of people will go uh, to ski in the winter. Uh, we also have the, uh, the coast of Caspian Sea. We have a lot of uh, farms here. Um, many people may uh, don't know. We have rice farm, we have tea farms, we have uh, hagar farms, which is uh, especially for the Caspian Sea. And then we have uh, olive farms in most of the country and the tourists can enjoy uh, the variety of programs in the country uh, as Maso also said from the desert part of the country to the mountain to the jungle to the beach side and having uh, different kind of programs we have a lot of uh, traditional old houses in the area in the jungle uh, which they can go and enjoy being with the local people there and the variety of food in the country will give you the uh, uh, give you the opportunity to taste uh, different kind of foods in different part of Iran, as each part of the country has uh, their special food. So you can enjoy, and we we also can uh, organize the culinary tour for different part of the country or for the whole the country. So. Uh, we have also different kind of handicrafts in uh, all parts of the country, which is special for the uh, each region. Uh, you can see some pictures, and we go for the southern part of the country with Mahsa. Of course, we have a vast variety of uh, shores and beaches here, uh, very near to the Persian Gulf. And uh, what is important in this area, I mean, uh, what is attractive and interesting in this area uh, is uh, the ability to do the fishing here in the, uh, in the Persian Gulf. There are lots of fishes there also uh, watching them or um, just do the fishing. We have a very nice uh, harrow forest in Geshem Island uh, and uh, lots of tourists who are in love with the nature activities and they would like to do the forest and the jungles here also in South of Iran, they could uh, visit it. You can see also the picture of the forests, the harrow forest and also next to that the fishing part. Then we have a very, very nice beach, which we call the Red Beach, which is in Hormuz Island, uh, which is uh, the southern, uh, which is in uh, the southern one, and uh, it is it is known for its red sands. And uh, but in addition to the dominant red color of the island here, uh, we have a splendid white color uh also that catches the eye, eyes of every visitor so uh today these days i mean before the virus and these things this uh little um uh, this little um town which is hormos island this little island is uh it was completely popular mostly to the iranian and also for the tourists it would be possible uh, then also we have uh, salt caves again in Gesp Island. As you can see, the Gesp Island is very rich in the natural uh, phenomena and in the, in the natural uh, interesting places. So uh, the visit to that part is uh, recommended. So uh, we have also the cultural activities. As for the cultural activities, we can uh, point to the handicrafts. Uh, each part of Iran, as you know, has their own special handicrafts. But uh, what is special about South of Iran is the artwork made by some seashells, and it is the pottery. Uh, then uh, it is uh, it is Dorani Buffy to ward off the evil eye. Also, then we have uh, then we have Sekeduzi and Ainaduzi, which is the decoration with coins and mirrors, the decoration of the 
um, textiles with uh, coins and mirrors and use it in the, uh, I mean, the clothing. Uh, they have a traditional music, we call it uh, Neyamban. I mean, they, they play, they play this traditional music uh, in uh, the uh, matter of their uh, weddings or in some of the um, morning uh, memorials or things like this. Then the women there have their special dress code. I mean, in uh, other parts of the Iran, I mean, Iranian are allowed to show the face, but uh, in uh, that part of the country, I mean, in south of Iran, they have something like, I mean, they cover, I mean, you can uh, see the picture. Uh, they will cover the face, the upper part, the nose and the cheeks in, in this place without the eyes. But this, um, this coverage, let's say, has its own special beauty and there are lots of decorations on it, as you can see in the picture also. Uh, you can see the hand of the lady here uh, doing some tattoos with, with Hana. This is something very, very popular in there. And nowadays, when you go to uh, the islands there for, um, um, for uh, enjoying the beach or things like this, you may find some of the uh, people who do that and this to you. So this is so, something interesting. And also uh, the food there is okay. So it is very near to the, to the Persian Gulf. So uh, the most important one are the ones who made with uh, the fish, many, many kinds of fish and many, many way, ways of uh, making it. So I'm done with South of Iran and I will listen to the job about the international airports we have and other parts. Uh, we can offer you, uh, we have uh, many international airports in uh, all parts of the country. And we also have domestic uh, airport in each part. So we also can use domestic flight. So you can see from here in uh, northwest of the country, we have Tabriz International Airport, uh, which mostly Turkish airline and others uh, will fly in and out from Tabriz. Uh, the most important country of uh, the most important uh, airport of the country is in Tehran, which is capital um, as other country. So all of the international flights will fly in and out in Tehran. We also have uh, the international flight, uh, international airport of uh, Mashhad in uh, north east of the country. In central area, we have Isfahan International Airport. We also have Shiraz International Airport in southern part of the country, and we also have the international airport in Kish Island. Uh, we have more international airport which the flights can in and out from, but uh, we just highlighted the most important one for you. So, uh, if you want to come to Iran, as you see, the country is big and we have a lot of product for you. Uh, so you can uh, for once. You need more than one month to discover all part of the country and the uh, shortest program can be from Tehran to Shiraz by eight or nine days uh, or even from uh, in and out from Isfahan to Shiraz if you want to um, commit visiting Tehran so it can be five six days this is the shortest one but the longest one can be more than one month so uh, don't worry about the flights uh, and the starting and ending point. So for entering Iran, all people need visa. Uh, our government will offer visa on arrival and visa in the embassy. It's so easy, except for uh, the citizen of the United States, British citizen, and also the citizens of Canada or most of the nations uh, can have the uh, on arrival visa. It's so easy, you will send us the copy of passport and uh, a picture and visa application form which will be sent to you and after one week we will give you the uh, visa confirmation code. So you can either go to the embassy, take, take your visa or come to the airport and take your SD card there. 
So nowadays there is no uh, paper visa for you. There is no sticker on your passport, and there is no stamp on your passport. So when you come to the country and going out, your passport is completely clean. Yeah, at the entrance, you need the uh, medical insurance, which uh, the name of Iran is included in the service. So if not, you can buy, or we also can buy for you the local medical insurance. So you can have the detail later contacting us. Uh, if you have any question about the visa, uh, you are welcome to ask at the end. Let's talk some uh, about our services in the country so you can uh, know how to book a trip or how we can organize for you a tour. Uh, the services in Iran, we have uh, categorized it in uh, some parts. First of all, let's talk about uh, the round trips we have, then we'll get to accommodation, transportation, to guide, and the visa that has been explained before. So the first services uh, that we offer, I mean, the most general one and uh, comprehensive one is the round trips. So we are incoming to a operator which do the round trips. The round trips uh, can be in uh, different parts. I mean, we are ready to uh, we are ready to give you uh, whatever itinerary you want. Uh, we have the SIC departures. We have two SIC departures for the German market, 2020-2021. Both of them are ready, uh, and uh, we will really hope that we could host you soon in these uh, departures. The shorter one and the longer one with some special activities, with some excursions for them. So they will be suitable for the clients so who, who do not want to travel alone. They will uh, see it in the city and coach and SAC departures. And then uh, also if they would like to join, I mean, to visit some other places, we have some special activities for them. We have some excursions for them and extensions for them to the uh, south of Iran, also to the north of Iran, plus the classical route. The FIT tours also will be uh, an option. Uh, so we are, we are completely ready to host also the FIT clients, two people, three people, less than seven people. Uh, yeah, we have the equipment, we have very good settles, also we have uh, nice vans, so they will keep completely uh comfortable and uh, then let's go to the group tours based on the request of them based on the request of the group from which uh, community and society they are we will organize the group tours for them and then uh, i think about the special they are special interested we could add that activity uh of course if possible to the tour and make it interesting uh, for them, the maximum capacity that uh, we have, I mean, we have a bus of 44 seats maximum. So, um, a 40 seats, we will uh, close the group, and then if there are more than that, we will make the tour into make the group into two different parts. The tailor made tours and the tailor uh, the tailor made programs uh, is really based on the requirements of the market and the clients. So if they ask any kind of an itinerary, any special activity from, from north to the west, anything, uh, we will ready to um, guide them in order to find the best route, uh, the best road, and also give them the um, very best itinerary. Uh, we are also, we will be also very happy to host the Mycelin Incentive Groups. Uh, of course, if all the um, circumstances will be done uh, perfectly, but we have the potential and we are ready to do the Mycelin Incentive Groups. Uh, the next services that we are, I mean, that it is included somehow in the round trips is the accommodation. We have different hotel categories, three star, two star, three star, four star, and five star hotels. And to be honest with you, there are really three, four, five, and I mean, um, or less than that starts. So you cannot be, you cannot be worried. Uh, there is no place to be worried about the uh, level of the hotels, and uh, be sure that as the quality is our very first, very first um, point, 
will best uh, we will choose the best accommodation type uh, and accommodation hotels for the, for our clients. Uh, aside from the hotels, we have the traditional uh, we have traditional hotels and ecologues. As in the previous parts, I have mentioned the uh, traditional houses and traditional hotels in some cities like Kiaz, uh, sometimes in Isfahan and uh, in Kashan, you can have the accommodation in the traditional houses. And it was a very big house that has been converted into hotel into the hotel. And this is something um, like a hotel museum or something like this. I mean, uh, you can be completely with the, I mean, you can, uh, you can get completely familiar with how the Iranians will live, the texture of the uh, things that have been um, worked in the decorations of the rooms. Uh, it is interesting. Then also in Ecolux, in many cities, we have different kinds of Ecolux. And uh, it is, I mean, there you could also uh, get familiar with the uh, get familiar with the local atmosphere of the city and of the the place that you are uh, staying with, staying in. Uh, the next services we have is the tourist guide. Uh, so we have the tourist guide. Uh, we have the tourists and we have the we have the tour guides all of the tour guides they are well trained and they have got their license from the minister of cultural heritage heritage handicraft and tourism of iran and so they are all official and uh we tr we as what well train them and of course working with them in uh working with them for so many times reviewing their uh survey and i mean the guys will be pick where we I mean, we are sensitive to the guys so we will pick them carefully in order to be suitable for the groups german language uh, two guys are available i mean we do not have any problem finding them uh and also in order to make the job easier for both the tour guide and the tourist, we have provided the audio sets to the clients, which is somehow I can say uh, a unique service is that our travel will offer to the clients. Um, there are very few travel agencies or tour operators in Iran that have this service. So in this way, um, uh, it would allow uh, the tour guide not to, I mean, speak very loud in the sites, whereas other groups are also there. And it will uh, it will let the uh, listener and the tourists to just put it in their ears and just enjoy the enjoy the atmosphere. So it will make the work of both the tourist and the tour guide easier. I will go to the transportation. Yeah, the private transfers we have from the airport to the hotel, from the hotel to the airport. Uh, these are all possible with English speaking driver guides who are again trained for this um, point and for this matter. Uh, we have different means and vehicles of transportation, the sedans, the vans, the buses, VIP buses, and uh, the normal buses like 44 seats. Uh, in all our uh, transportation vehicles, we have uh, the internet access, we have the free Wi-Fi and the internet access, and um, they are all new, less than five years old. So this is, the, this is one of the uh, benefits, I mean, one of the advantages uh, of us, I mean, doing this with using the vehicles and using the uh, means of transportation. Uh, that is quite new and also we provide them with the internet access. Um, in all of the domestic flight, I mean domestic airports, uh, that will be possible for us to do the transfer. So it is not only the fact that, okay, we'll buy a package and then do everything for that. If you have bought one service only, transfer or things like that, it will be also possible for us to organize everything. Uh, and the VIP transfers were also uh, possible with four out four cars or any cars that have been uh, re requested. And 
uh, that's it about also the transportation. The visa part has been uh, already introduced by uh, Sajjad. Okay, let's go to the other so, part. What happened to the world made us forced to adapt ourselves with some protocol with COVID-19 as the vaccines also is not uh, provided yet. So we have to have the solution for our business. So the best solution is to get adapted with the virus. So we did some um, suggestions and some uh, protocols for our uh, tools and the operation to make it easier for you to, uh, to sell uh, the tool better for the others. So uh, I'll go so quickly. Uh, for the transportation, we will uh, use the, um, all the vehicles as uh, half capacity. So uh, we also sent it to you uh, before. And uh, if you need this protocol, we will also send it to you the, all the details of uh, tour operation so you can have all the details together so uh, in the terms of uh, transportation as i told you we will make the capacity of bus or van uh, as half so the tourists can have the social distance while enjoying the tour in the uh, vehicle for the accommodation we will work with the uh, I mean, the, the Ministry of uh, Health of Iran also uh, has forced the, all the hotel to uh, use the half capacity to um, have all the health protocols. And uh, so we will also go and check all the hotels before the tourists come and the, they arrive also to make sure everything is in the right uh, order. For the tour guide, and for sightseeing to keep the social distance, we will use uh, the audio set as Maxwell said for all the tourists, uh, even if they are two or three or five, uh, we will use the audio set to make the social distance for tourists and also the tour guide and the other groups in the sites. And even the sightseeing in the country, they also made some regulation so at the same time, uh, they cannot host many groups or many people to keep the social distance and to keep the tourists safe. So we also educate our tour guides, our drivers and our staffs how to uh, adapt this, uh, the uh, COVID-19 and organizing the tour. So there is no uh, need to worry we also care about the health uh, and safety of the passengers so for the restaurants we will choose and we will also audit before uh, tourists arrival we will go and see uh, to make sure the restaurant is a standard and they also uh, will care about the health protocol uh, for the social distance for the serving uh, we, we do not have any buffet for this period of virus so it would be served by menu so the tourists can check uh, i mean can uh, choose and uh, in, in case of any emergency we will also give the emergency number and contacts to the all the tourists so they also can uh, contact us anytime during the uh, trip and for last, if you have any question, we are here for you to answer. And also, we are, uh, you, you can have our uh, email and uh, the website. If you need any further uh, information later, uh, we are ready to provide it for you. And we are here in Iran for you and for your assistance. Alam, if, if there is any question, because uh, I share my screen and I cannot see. so. Let's see if there is any question. Thank you very much to you both for the very nice presentation and all the information. Um, I have here one question about the um, visa. 
How much is the cost of the visa? Can you answer that for us? Uh, yeah. For different nationality is different. For uh, German, Swiss, and uh, Austria, now it's 75 euro mm -hmm. in the airport. And if I'm not mistaken, 50 euro in the embassy. If they want to uh, make the visa on arrival, and we prepare for them. We will charge uh, 20 euro a service charge here, so they uh, they don't need to queue up, uh, and then uh, it will be more faster and everything is prepared here. But it's um, up to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs if they, they make any change. But it was changed for three, uh, I think, three years, three four years ago, uh, and then I don't think now they they rise it. But now it's 75 euro in the airport and 50 euro in the embassy. Yes, thank you very much. And as well for everyone, um, Sajad and Maza have prepared a sheet for all the information about the visa. If someone needs this, so we can send them gladly to you as well. Um, so far, I can see there are no questions. Um, it was a lot of information with very good ideas, I, I think. Um, Maza, Sajad and me and, and I, we will have another webinar in September about a specific topic um, to go through another specific um, areas of Iran and we'll let you know about it. But for now, uh, we thank you. And yes, Sajad and Maza, thank you very, very much for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hope so, to see you soon. Ja, an alle Zuhörer vielen Dank nochmal auf Deutsch und Ihnen einen schönen Tag. Chodachafes, Wiedersehen und bye bye. Chodachafes, bye.